Hello again, it's Professor Hendricks, and I'd like to tell you about position-specific scoring matrices. Now, a position-specific scoring matrix, or PSSM, is essentially a probabilistic way of describing a motif. So unlike a consensus sequence that has exact characters or IUPAC codes for each position, the PSSM has probabilities defined for each position in each nucleotide. But before we can explain what the PSSM is, we might want to first talk about what the PSSM isn't. And so to do that, we need a background model. A background model is essentially a probabilistic model that describes random sequences. So in other words, this is defining our single nucleotide frequencies, P sub A, P sub C, P sub G, and P sub T, and any particular sequence X, given this random model, is defined as the product over these single nucleotide frequencies for the, for the characters in that sequence. So in this case, probability of the character at X1, X2, X3, and so on. Now for our motif model, we want to define a matrix of probabilities. In this case, the rows of this matrix define the four nucleotides, A, C, G, T, and the columns define the different positions along instances of this sequence. So in this case, each of these probabilities de describes the probability of, say, observing base T at position two, and so on in our matrix. And similarly, we can define a probability of the sequence X given our motif model as the product of these frequencies, but now they're position dependent, so we need to keep track of that subscript as well and take the product of F sub B I over each position I of our sequence X. Now let's consider we have a collection of sequences S, and so this is X1 up to Xn, and as you can see, I've got my sequences right here. And so the first thing we want to do is define a count matrix for these. In order to do that, it's useful to define each of these sequences as a matrix. A really useful mathematical way of doing this is with the Kronecker delta. Now the Kronecker delta has uses all over mathematics, and it's really simple. It basically is one whenever the subscript A and B are equal, and it's zero otherwise. So in other words, delta AB is defined by this piecewise function. And we can apply this, this Kronecker delta function to define an indicator matrix. An indicator matrix is basically one whenever the sequence X at position I has the base B and zero otherwise. And we can write it delta sub B XI. So in other words, for a particular sequence like ACGTA, our indicator matrix would have rows corresponding to the four nucleotides and columns corresponding to positions along our sequence. Well, we put a one at the first position in the A row because our sequence has an A at the first position, and so on. So while the representation may look a little scary, in this example, ACGTA, we just have this kind of matrix representation right here. But what we want to do is generate a matrix of counts, C sub B I. This would be defined similar to our indicator matrix where the rows correspond to the four bases and the columns correspond to our positions. And we're just essentially summing up all these different indicator matrices to get one cumulative count matrix. So for a collection of sequences, our count matrix basically is counting each nucleotide at each position. So for example, I have three A's and two T's in the first column. So I'd have three, zero, zero, two. The second, second and third columns are all C's and G's, respectively, and so on. We can then normalize our count matrix to get a probability matrix or frequency matrix, F sub BI, that I mentioned previously. In this case, all I'm doing is summing the terms in each column of, that mat of the count matrix and then dividing each term by the sum of its corresponding column. Now the weight matrix score is essentially a log likelihood ratio. It can be defined as the following. S of X is equal to the log likelihood ratio of the probability of X given the motif model divided by the probability of X given the random model. If we replace these probabilities with our previously defined product formulas, the product over these single nucleotide or position dependent frequencies, we recognize that, this, that the log of a product is equal to the sum of the logs and we can write down our formula of S of X like this. The terms of that matrix that we're summing up are essentially what's called a PSSM. This W sub B I matrix 
is the log likelihood ratio of F sub B I over P sub B, our motif frequency matrix divided by our background probabilities. And when we want to score a particular sequence X, we're simply summing over the corresponding terms of this matrix. So in other words, for this particular sequence right here, we have to sum W sub C1 because there's a C at position 1, W sub G2 because there's a G at position 2, and so on, getting this cumulative sum. Another way we can represent this is using our indicator matrix that we previously defined. So in other words, S sub X can be defined as, this, as the sum over both I and B of our indicator matrix times our PSSM matrix, also called a weight matrix. And in a way, this is kind of like a matrix dot product where we're simply multiplying element-wise the terms of our indicator matrix and our weight matrix. Either way, the score can be interpreted as the log likelihood ratio of the probability of being a motif versus the probability of being a random sequence. Now, as it turns out, there's a way to do this in BioPython. I've already defined a collection of sequences called sites right here. All I need to do is import the BioPython motif module from bio import motifs. And I can define a motif using these instances with motifs.create and plugging in the collection of sites. Now, if I want to print to see what my count matrix looks like, I can say motif.counts. And as you can see, this is defined similar to what I did, or except for it's using zero based positions for the columns rather than one based. But you can see that the counts should match up. We can also define a degenerate consensus sequence as I've done previously. And in this case, it's WCGWR using the IUPAC codes that I defined in my previous video. So there's also a BioPython way to define searching using a position-specific scoring matrix. We can basically define our position-specific scoring matrix as motif.pssm. And we can print our PSSM here. You can see that there's negative infinite terms. These correspond to cases where our count matrix is zero because the log of zero is basically negative infinity or undefined. And so in order to use this, what we could first do is define a length k, which is going to be the len of our motif.consensus. And motif.consensus is different from the degenerate consensus in that it's just showing the most frequently occurring character at each position rather than IUPAC codes at positions that are ambiguous. And so I can use this PSSMW to loop through a DNA sequence. So if I have a DNA sequence in mind, I could search through here and check each KMR computed score and print it out if it is above some defined threshold. So the way to do that is I could say 4i comma s for each position and score in w.search of DNA and print out the position score and the KMR at the position i. And a couple interesting things here. First, there are negative positions. These are actually defining sequences in the reverse strand. You notice how our consensus sequence has a CG at the second and third position, or you know, one and two in zero-based indexes. And these sequences have a CG or over here, which would be a CG in the reverse strand. So these are the right KMERs, but they're defined with negative positions, and they're actually on the reverse strand of the DNA sequence. So we can correct for that by adding an if statement to our for loop. So if the position i is negative, we can print our positions, scores, and DNA kmers with the reverse complement. And we can also add an additional column to give our strand. Now our positions i, we can actually correct for that by defining them relative to the len of the DNA. So this should, I believe, give us our positions in the uh, forward strand, hopefully. Maybe we can check, check an example, unless it's off by one. So else, if it's in the if it's a positive I, then it must be in the forward strand, so we can print something similar to a four, the position, the score, 
the DNA camer, and you can also print the strand being forward here. And so this gives us all of our sequences seem to match up with the CG dimer in the um, second and third position. And let's just check. So position 11 should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that gives this sequence here, which looks like it does match up in the reverse strand for this particular sequence. Now the other thing is, as I showed before, there's negative infinities here. So we can actually correct that by defining a pseudo count. Now an example of a pseudo count could be like adding one to each position when we're defining our frequency matrix. And this would then be used to define our weight matrix. So adding one to each term would be kind of like the simplest choice, but there are other more sophisticated choices that we can talk about some other time. But to do the example of one, I could say motif dot pseudo counts equals one, and then redefine my PSSM. And now do this exact same loop again. And we get a lot more positions. Our W matrix or PSSM now no longer has negative infinite terms, and we get a lot more positions. Our original positions are still in there, and they're going to be the highest scoring examples, but along with a lot of other lower scoring examples because we no longer have those negative infinities. So with that, I'll end this video on position-specific scoring matrices, and I'll see you next time.